their show, the first series for the year. Yeah. Holy smokes. Last year it was I mean last year was just a month ago, not even a, a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eight days ago. Eight days ago. Thank well, God. when this airs, it'll be what? About, it'll be roughly two weeks. Yeah, like 16 days. Um, okay, so, you know, generally, uh, we, we love we love this series because we get to have lots of fun. Generally, you know, our shows are kind of a little bit serious because it's business news. I mean, even though we talk about fashion style and um, fashion uh, events and lifestyle news and stuff, but it's usually very um, colorful. No, it's when we have you, it's colorful. Yeah, it's informative more than anything. Oh, but yeah. when you're on, then it's colorful. Exactly. <laughs> Bring the pink. You, there you go. Um, so we're gonna just jump right into um, the show, and hopefully, we'll just have a great time with it. And just you know, oh, also Periscope, and also listeners. Although the show is not live, look forward to our uh, challenge. So we've decided that we're going to have this challenge called Hit the Quan Challenge. Now, I just want to say, I'm going to preface this with neither Kaylin or myself have ever heard about this song <laughs> until recently. Why is it Quan? We do not know. So the only hit person within this group is Shatanya, right? <laughs> I hate to bring it. <laughs> what they did not know about me, I'm competitive. Oh, I wow. love to I love to compete, and I love she to dance, so I came very ready, I'm like, I got my bring it on, my, you know, I got my dance moves ready, I got my outfit ready, I'm ready to challenge, Yeah. so. So, as you can see, Shatani is taking this challenge very quite seriously. seriously. <laughs> I am too, and I believe Kaylin is too, on some level, we're going to, um, well, I feel like I'm going to win this challenge, but anyway, let me just tell you a little bit more about it. <laughs> That's why I brought my A again. <laughs> okay, so although I cannot dance, I have very limited moves and have not heard the song before, I challenge these ladies to, um, I guess, this this war on dance, mm -hmm. and I profess that I will win. And so what we're asking is that you viewers will, you know, not just the views, but, you know, our social media um, forums and stuff like that can kind of chime in and say who the best dancer is and then also we would love for you guys to um, sort of to send us your version of Hit the Quan right. and what we're thinking of doing is each one of us will pick a favorite piece, a jewel, um, jewel from eclab.com and then um, whoever we choose, the, like whoever is chosen as the winner out of the group, that favorite piece will be awarded to the winner of uh, the video of the, I don't know, month. So you better bring your A game. Yeah. Like, you better have to hit the quan right? if you want to win that piece. <laughs> so I'm going to give it up to the girls. I mean, let, uh, you know, I guess we'll start with Shatanya. Let her give her a little, you know, why she will win this challenge. And then we'll go over to Kale and she'll tell us why. <laughs> now I feel like I'm in a Vegas fight. I'm going to win because, <laughs> well, I think I may win because I do love dancing. I do like, you know, I like to hit the quan. Well, even though I found out about hit the quan maybe two days ago. So I've been oh, hitting. Oh, I thought you knew it already. You no, know? <laughs> so I've seen little kids do it. I've seen them do it. I'm like, what's that? Because I've, I'm, I've gotten up in age. So now, like, I go to my godchildren and they, I'm like, ask them, what's this? And I see little kids. So on New Year's, I was at a uh, New Year's Eve party and I saw little kids doing them doing it, but I didn't know what it was until you said, hit the quan, and then when I was like, that's what they were doing. So, cause I was like, show me that dance. But, you know, so now I've been doing my research. So now I'm gonna be a piece. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> we'll see. Okay, Kaylin. Oh, well, I, I was up practicing all night last night, so let me just say that. My sister coached me, so I had an outside coach. That was cheating. That's cheating. That's that's cheating. cheating. That's she got coached. That's not cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> She's our coach. She's just a family member, not a serious coach. You gotta see if you're hitting the quan right, because I don't know what this quan is. She's probably pull up. So, I need Great. someone to help me with this. Sure. Also, I am being a very good sport participating in this. So, you know, you challenged us. I was like a little hesitant, but okay. I'm trying my best. So. <laughs> We'll see what happens. And she'll probably be the one to win. We right? She has coaching and she's practicing. And I'll, I keep forgetting stuff, so just let's watch our progress. Yeah. Right. And so we will um, we'll put the video 
together and we'll put it out there so you guys can see and you guys get to vote on who did, who hit the pawn the best and then we'd love to see your videos to see who which one you know if you guys hit the pawn the best and then of course there's a prize at the end so it's just a challenge to get people up and fit and you know just excited about being active so we just thought this would be a great and fun way to sort of do that so um you know, I hope everybody joins in. So we'll just go right into our show for today. For today. Um, okay, so I guess before we like even start with the topics and you know um, topics that we've kind of put together for today's show, tell us um, what you any great things or any um, anticipated things that you have coming up for the new year. Um, working with you know doing things for the Oscars, Grammys. Going to LA for award season, and that is my mission. Just and then, like my new, I started a new company as a creative director, mm -hmm. so I produce um, photo shoots, fashion shows, and things like that. Although I already always produce fashion shows, but now I'm doing something more on my own. Oh, nice. Which is awesome. yeah, so it's just that's a, that's my baby that I just created, Shatanya Ami Production, just producing shows and being a creative director and coming in and just taking a person's vision or giving them a vision if they don't have a vision, just creating the whole the whole gist of, you know, of their idea. Like if you have a clothing line and you want to, you know, market your clothing line and you need a photo shoot or a lookbook or whatever, I get you your photographer, hair, makeup, model. I come up with the vision, I see, you know, I come up with the whole idea of your, you know, for your brand and help you market it. So we'll help you get the vision part of the to market it or whatever. So that's my new project that I'm working on, and it's really going well so far. And 2016 just started, so I'm like super super excited yeah. doing that and just a bunch of different things. Like I'm, it's gonna be a big year. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I can't wait to go to LA for the Grammys and the Oscars and things like that and dress the celebrities and go to the Vanity Fair party. I can't wait. So. Yeah. No, I. I Congratulations. Thank you. A, and then B, you know what, it just sounds like it's just an amazing beginning to, you know, what hopefully for all of us will exactly. be an exciting right. and, you know, prosperous exactly. and amazing new year. Right. You think it, believe it, it'll happen. Absolutely. It'll manifest. That's my, that's my motto. That's my motto to success anyway. Yeah. Think it, believe it, write it down, it'll manifest. And, you know, and then the work comes after. Yeah. But the, the thoughts is the main star, the yes. first star. So clearly, you know, you have a lot of fashion experience, you know, a lot about the fashion world. So, you know, for our Ashley Tanya segment, we always bring up some different things that are happening in the fashion world, we kind of gauge your opinion. Sometimes our listeners ask questions about, you know, what it's like to be a stylist. So we have a few questions for you about, you know, what is going on right now. So Casey, if you want to start with the huge news of Dolce & Gabbana, this is pretty big. Okay. All right, so Dolce & Gabbana caused a stir on social media with the announcement of their new clothing line of hijabs. Um, Abeas, I might be saying that one incorrectly, and head coverings. Um, a lot of people are thinking the fashion company's decision to release a collection inspired by a typical Muslim wear is suggesting that modesty is slowly becoming a trend in the fashion industry. I'm not sure which fashion industry they're referring to, but okay. And so a lot of bloggers are starting to follow the trend in their brands such as uh, Modeline, which sells fashionable but modest clothing, um, which seems to be growing in popularity. Mm -hmm. So do you think the modesty trend will be a big thing um, in 2016 or do you think it'll be, you know, one of those fly-by-night things that um, here today, gone tomorrow? It's like not a trend in general, you know what I mean? I've it not might seen be, it. Not be a trend. <laughs> You know what, because uh, this is what I feel about that trend. I feel like it will it will probably last within the fashion it people. Mm -hmm. Like the people, like the real fashionistas, the people that's within fashion, yeah. like maybe PR people, designers, things like that. But I feel like with the, you know, the rest of the world, it may, some people may pick it up, mm -hmm. but it won't last. But you know what? It may last, but I, I I don't seem like don't feel like it's gonna last. I would love for it to last because I think modesty should be a trend. Yeah. And you know the it's kind it's inspired by Muslim attire and 
you know, that's how women should be. We should be more classy, more wrapped up. There's a lot of women who's basically naked nowadays. Yeah. Like, clothes are barely there, and it's just, it's really disrespectful to ourselves to walk around just like that, like, with nothing, just showing everything. So it's like, the modesty trend, I hope that it sticks. I don't see it much sticking long with, you know, the the general public, mm -hmm. but I definitely do see, I, I can see editors and celebrities and stuff, like, really get yeah, gravitated. Yeah, shows, there was a huge fashion show yesterday, and mm -hmm. it was um, the CES Fashion Wear Show, oh, okay. and, it, and we're pre-recording, so it happened yesterday, just oh. January 7th for us. Oh, uh, yeah. Where you guys will be a week behind, but oh, it's okay. still... Still pretty exciting. They had a whole technology and fashion show. Okay. So they had 20 different outfits that all incorporated technology into the outfit. So yes. some of the ones so I saw, yeah, we looked at them earlier. One dress had fabric flowers that were deflecting the light and had like op fiber optics in them. Um, a lot of 3D printing on clothing mm -hmm. and some different dresses reacted to sound. I don't really know what that would do. Interesting. There's also a vest, it's called the Scotty vest, and it made its debut, and it has 30 pockets within it, and it can have a full-size laptop in there, so you can just wear all your technology. And then there's also um, the Wonder Wolf, which is a bow tie for dogs, so it monitors their activity, lets the owner know what the dog is doing. Um, there was a whole brand called Sensoria, which they have clothing that monitors your heart rate and kind of your blood pressure. And then the last one was um, just LED lights. A lot of different outfits just incorporated LED lights into okay. them, so you can walk around all lit up. So then what did you think of technology being incorporated into the actual clothing of the show? And they're kind of thinking this will be a new thing to start up another new trend of this year. Oh, God. I think the, I think the electronics in the clothes, that's cute. Definitely cute for a show, but I really feel like is that really functional? Like, okay, so if you get caught in the rain, it could be. What's what gonna if happen? You have two light bulbs, two flashlights. Okay. People are terrible. <laughs> People are at the bus stop being electrocuted. We're already tied to our technology too much. We're tied to our cell phones. That's We're true. tied to our laptops. So now you got a jacket that charges your laptop. You are really tied to your dog if you want him to wear an electric <laughs> bow tie that tells you what's going on with him. That's just too much. Like. Yeah, I don't You're know. doing too much. So like, I should wear electronics. <laughs> now you're giving the dog radiation. Oh. And now he has it's to true. go to bed. Now that's a bigger bill for you. You got you got a jacket with 30 pockets. That's way too much. Yeah. You don't need that many things going on. Like that's we already seem like this generation, we already like so consumed in our phones and our laptops and things like that. We don't know how to communicate. Our children don't know how to talk anymore. They're texting, they're stuck to their phones, they're stuck to their games. I went places and all the kids are like, yeah. yeah. And it's like, well, they don't interact anymore. And people walking down the street, especially if you live in New York, it's like, Walk you want to shoot people. Because <laughs> they're like this, and then they crash into you and they look at you like, What's going Did on? you see me? Yeah. <laughs> no, because I wasn't. I didn't pop up on your phone. If I could pop up on your phone, like, hey, I'm about to be crashing to you. <laughs> then that would be different. That would be a good invention. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, watch out. But, but no. Like a white president it pops up on their phone. Just pop up on your screen. Like, oh, no. <laughs> no, but yeah, the technology is cute. It's definitely cute, like with the LED lights and stuff like that. I remember I had LED gears. I'm aging I myself. Did too. My LA gears that lit up and my LA text that lit up. It's cute. Mm -hmm. And I had, oh my God, I had a boyfriend who had a hat that lit up and it drove me crazy. Really? As you said, it was the look of the 80s though. Yeah, the it LA. was. His hat was lighting up and I used to, he used to say the stupidest things while I'm looking at him and his hat was lighting up and I'm like, oh I just want to slap you in that hat that's so for like, oh yeah. No, that's, I, cause you probably weren't part of the cool crowd. I wasn't either actually. Let me that <laughs> Since you are celebrity styles, you kind of bring up a celebrity happening that has occurred recently. Mm -hmm. And so this time we want to talk about Channing Tatum on Lip Sync mm -hmm. Battle. That and was funny. He, had, he did Beyonce's Run the World song, and then Beyonce came out. Yes. And we all watched it. So, what are your opinions on that? I, I love think it. everyone loved it, yeah. I loved it. I think what Channing did Tatum did it. He was amazing <laughs> at Beyonce. His face was deep. They 
beat his face. His face was beat. His wig, I need that wig, Shannon. If you're watching, <laughs> that wig was amazing. His wife was really, really good. Oh my gosh, she was gosh, a she genuine uh, yeah, pony. pony. Yeah, she did a really good job. And I really loved it. I think it was so good. His outfit was off the time. Like, so I need to pull that. So where did you get that from? <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I loved it. And I'm so happy for LL Cool J and um, Christy Teigen. Chrissy? Chrissy Yeah, Teigen. yeah. I'm happy for them that they have this new show on Spike Lip Sync. And I'm going to be watching it. I just found out about it. And I'm going to be watching it. Yeah. I'm really happy for LL uh, Cool J and that he has his new show or whatever. But I loved it. I think Shannon. Channing? Channing. Channing. Sorry. Channing did a really great job and he nailed it. The dance moves, everything. Oh, His outfit. The fashion was just off the chain. Yes, the fur piece. Oh, I love a good fur. Oh, the fur God. piece that he came out with, the wig, his makeup. Then Beyonce came and killed it, of course, bowed down to Queen Bee. So, yeah. it was amazing. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this portion of the show. And, um, but. Also part of our show, as we mentioned earlier uh, when we started, that you know we're going to have our um, hit the pawn challenge. So, um, and so we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we will come back with the designer feature, the news, and the events for the week. And welcome back, guys. Today we're talking about the designer feature, which is the rope anchor necklace by Sarah Cavender. I am wearing it today, and it is. A long twisted mesh rope chain. It's got an anchor pendant on the bottom. If you guys can see it on Periscope, and it comes with a size adjuster in the back, so you can get as long or short as you want. And the chain's about 36 inches, and the anchor length is three and a half inches. So it's definitely a big statement anchor piece. You can really see it, and it's handcrafted and detailed. It's perfect for our challenge today. I feel like I'm wearing like a gold <laughs> chain, kind of. As close to a gold chain as you can get. That's just in character. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's perfect for a casual look. You can just throw it on. Super easy with anything because it's a neutral. And you can get it at eCloud.com. Yes, you can. And make sure you go pick that one up and all the other pieces too that you find there. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> just click on it. <laughs> Put it all in your cart. <laughs> right. Okay, so we're going to move right into our news. And in today's news, according to Bloomberg Business, there's a growing number of merchants expected to quit paying their debts this year. Uh, despite a late surge in the holiday sales that everyone's been talking about, and we reported on it last week, companies like Nine West, J Crew, uh, J Crew Group Inc., 99 Cents Only Stores, their debt fell um, to <laughs> it fell significantly last year. Yeah, because um, I think well, I'm gonna explain it, oh, and sorry. then we were under. <laughs> so they're all struggling under um, over this debt, and you know they. Basically, um, they took on leveraged buyouts mm -hmm. years ago. You yeah. know, like I think um, when you know before Obama came into office, there was like all these you know businesses that were just sort of suffering and struggling, and so like um, you know the investors bought out a lot of these companies, such mm -hmm. as the ninety nine cent store, mm -hmm. and so now you know they have to pay back the debts, mm -hmm. and so you know they've been paying, but like the past two or three years. Um, Payments on the the on time payments have become less and less, and now it's getting to the point where they can't even like wow. you know pay debt. So basically, um, according to Bloomberg, their bond prices have plummeted. So the investors that have invested, like you know, now their bond prices have plummeted, and in some cases, uh, to as little as twenty five cents on a do on the dollar, as investors brace for the possible the possibility of default. Mm -hmm. So they're they're really you know biting their tongue because it's like no one can afford to pay pay back their debts. Um, the industry has been limit, limping along for a while now due to the a variety of forces and of course the economy is one of the one of those forces. Spending has migrated to the intranet. That's another reason. Like most people are shopping online now. Um, lenders have turned uh, weary and the debt burn burdens of pre crisis buyouts will make it tough to revive struggling merchants. Um, there Beyond the retailers I just uh, mentioned, there's also other big retailers that are struggling with this, and you know they named a few: uh, Pilgrim's Pride, Dwayne Reed. That was a shocker to me. Yeah, really? uh, Blockbuster. Well, I you know, know I paid one of their bills before. <laughs> I, know, right? I shop there all the time, so they cannot be in debt because oh they Oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> Blockbuster, Sabaros, Barney's. 
um, Orchid Supply, Guitar Center, Radio Shack. Well, I've been seeing a lot of Radio Shacks closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there was one right near here on 57th Street yeah. that closed. Yeah, a lot of them closed. Yeah, so it just seems to be across the board. These are wow. big streams. These are like big name stores, you know. So they have Amazon, stores. you have eBay, and you have Amazon's, you know, stocks. Their, mm -hmm. you know, their sales are just just rising, okay. and everyone else's is just like it's just like we become lazy. So now, yeah, like, yeah. I'm just quit yeah. stuff back. Exactly. Like, we're Two looking for bar bargain. bargain. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so all these defaults from last year. Um, through December 14th, it, uh, seen, they were seen to be the highest since 2009. Mm -hmm. okay. So this all according to Standard & Poor's data, and so that's where we are today with you know um, our financial, I guess, issues oh, within the retail industry. Mm -hmm. Also, another issue in the retail industry, we talked about this last week, yeah. but a female jewelry robber has held up five Southeastern jewelry stores. <laughs> So on January 4th, um, she entered a North Carolina jewelry store at 10.30 a.m. She pulled out a gun and she ordered a male and female associate into the back and then she zip tied them. <gasps> and she emptied all the showcases yeah. and she's believed to be driving a four-door dark Toyota Camry with a temporary paper license plate. So you spot that. Um, she's also been committing a string of robberies throughout Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee. So she's she's going everywhere. Yeah. And she's stolen as much as $4 million <gasps> in merchandise. Cool. So yeah, what she normally does is when there's a few associates on the floor, she'll show up and tie them up and so far no one's been hurt, but she is considered extremely dangerous and the jeweler's security alliance is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to her capture. So you can contact them at their number, head to their website and they'll give you more information on that and if you see her down on the line. Yeah. But what does she look like? Do they have a picture? Yeah, we do. And we will put it up. Yeah, um, um, okay. We do have a picture. I'll, I'll, we'll show it to you a little bit later. Yeah, but yeah, no. We, we reported on this last week, but I just felt like it was really important yeah. because she's still sort of out there. She's yeah. partnering all these jewelers and, you know, we could be one of them. So, um, you know, she looks she like... She put me in those zip ties. <laughs> You know, when you see her photo, and the photos that they have um, she on, she's armed. Oh. But when you first see her, she looks like your average, maybe housewife or something oh, like no. that. You know, so you, it's you know unsuspecting. That? No. Okay, so we're gonna move right on to the events for the week. Um, so if you can't get enough of dancing, I'm not one of those. I used to be one of those when I was younger. Shatani is definitely one now. <laughs> uh, after today's show, you can check out a cool event happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, as in when they hear it, not tomorrow, right. Tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow, yes. yes, yes, yes. So per <laughs> Periscope uh, viewers, not tomorrow as in the 9th, no. yeah. but tomorrow as in the 14th. Correct. Yeah. So tomorrow is the 14th for you know um, for our blog talk listeners. It's the Triskelion Arts second annual improv festival called Never Before, Never Again. I like that actually. Mm -hmm. It's held at the Triskelion Arts Center in Brooklyn from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and it's all about improv, as the name suggests. Uh, the event will feature artists who focus in dance, music, comedy, and so much more. So it's, it sounds like a fun thing that you should definitely attend. And since it's improv, these are all one-time performances that you won't be able to see again. So you should definitely check it out. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. thought it really tied in with today's show. Yeah, too. yeah. And also, this is a huge thing for all of you New Yorkers. The Governor's Fall Music Festival lineup was announced today. Oh, okay. So you know, you'll be hearing us a week later, but it's still pretty early to get your tickets. Yeah. Since you can get them before they sell out because normally they do sell out. Mm. And we talked about this event last year too. We so did. It's such a huge event here in New York, one of the biggest music events that comes here. And it's happening on June 3rd to the 5th on Randall's Island. Oh. And some of the headliners are Kanye West, The Strokes, oh. and The Killers. Mm. And other people that will be there will be Beck, Robin, Death Cab mm. for Cutie, M83, Heim, and Churches, which are all bands I love. So maybe I'll go. We'll see. Yeah, no, I, you know, maybe we could try to see how we can cover it this year. We yeah. tried to cover it last year, but oh. it, we. We decided to do it so last minute that we couldn't get anything yeah. going, so maybe we can cover it. We have a lot of time. I know, we do actually. And I really am falling in love with all the new songs that Kanye's been putting out. I mean, I didn't really, I was a big fan of his last album, but this one, 
always loved Kanye. No, his first album I loved, and then I felt like, you know, the, I don't know if this was the second one or not, but the last one I was just like, okay, it was okay. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the, at least the songs that I've been hearing coming out with, with him lately, I feel like, oh my gosh, like, okay. He's really back. hitting it. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely back. Okay, guys, so we are going to take a quick break because then when we come back, the dance off begins. Hit the quad. And we're going to hit the quad. So we'll be back in about 40 